Hello everyone, I'm Professor Geek. Welcome back to the channel. And <laughs> it's it's so it's sad each and every time this happens. What whatever movie is about to come out where the trailer just completely and utterly misses the mark. You've always got that group of people that rush to their to their keyboards as though they're the first people ever to issue this argument. You haven't even seen it yet. You can't say, how can you say that? You haven't seen, because I, I have logical discernment capabilities. I'm an educated intellectual adult. I'm sorry that you aren't and you're incapable of knowing what anything will truly be until you've experienced it fully. But if I see a, a brown pile with flies landing on it on the corner of the sidewalk, I don't need to taste it to know what it is and know that that's not going to be good. Stay away from it. But, you know, you haven't seen it yet. You know, silly, silly, most rudimentary, asinine argument. So let's just dispel that right at the get-go first. It's, it's a nonsense argument. It doesn't work. Although you'll still have people in the comments of this video because they don't even wait for the video. They just run right to that go-to comment. It's like, you know, I'll shut you up about this movie that I think is going to be amazing, even though I haven't seen it yet. You know, that kind of thing. So, uh, so you'll see that. But getting past those those silly sort of surface level arguments, when I saw the Batman trailer, when I watched it, I thought this. I wasn't even angry. I wasn't. I thought, yeah, makes sense. This this is what a Batman movie should be right about now. Now I don't mean should as in. I want it to be, or it's good for mythology, or it's good for the character of Batman. No, not at all. Of course, it should, in that sense, be we should finally be getting a live-action take on the iconic Batman, something that actually truly honors the character and doesn't just pander to the director's vision or um, or, or all of the divided you know, Bat bros out there and that kind of thing. But what I meant by that was that it makes sense. It's exactly the kind of Batman movie I'd expect in today's climate after... The character, the icon, the archetype has been so misunderstood and so stubbornly, consistently mishandled by the copyright holders for so long. We're at a place now where there's no such thing in the public consciousness. Just your average person off the street, there's no such thing. And it pains me to say this, but there's no such thing as an iconic Batman anymore to your average person, the average public consciousness. Warner Brothers and DC Comics, even before you know Warner Brothers really got involved much, they've allowed so many misconstruing, misconstrued uh, perceptions of the character to, to, to be made. They've allowed so many uh, completely off the wall, totally missed the mark incarnations of characters that bear that Batman name. And of course, I mean, how can you, you the, the character can't remain consistent in people's in our in our consciousness and in our mythology it can't remain like that for that long so the word batman doesn't really mean anything anymore it just means a character who's you know you, you given the name bruce wayne you know maybe because you know you can you can maybe i mean it's not going to be long before we've got a brianna wayne you know donning the the uh the, the cowl i'm sure but um but you know you give him certain trappings around there as, as far as who his character is and what his values are and what he what he truly fights for and why he fights and how he fights all of that's up for interpretation now it's all up for interpretation because they've messed around with it and just allowed it to be uh deconstructed to the point where there's no there's no consistent peg to to hang batman on anymore in our culture and that's 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 tragic it's tragic superman's getting there Superman's getting there. Batman's well past that point. And it's very sad because Batman, the true iconic Batman, is a necessity, is, is, a, is a sticking point for our culture. It's a, uh, a pediment, you know, his archetype anyway. Not that, you know, you remove Batman and all oh, the world's going to heck, you know. No, not that at all. But you've got the idea of uh, we've lost something. And, and, I'll, and I'll tell you how and why. So, as I said, we, we don't have, we've never had a live action iconic Batman on screen. And that's not a slight against the, the, the Adam West Batman 1966. I do love the Adam West 1966 Batman, but that was never, never intended to be the iconic Batman. 
that was always from the you know from the moment they decided that that was supposed to be this sort of absurdist theater Americanized you know take on on a comic book or whatever you know and that's what they did they had fun with it and it was great great fun to watch people uh, of that time are like who caught the tail end of that time depending on their age they can have uh, problems with Batman sixty six because unfortunately it did shape how the culture looked at Batman for a time and that was unfortunate. But it's not the it's not you know the nineteen sixty six show's fault by any means you know Batman is uh you know that was a great that was a great show it was a great incarnation of it and it kept true to the characters you know core its values values and whatnot uh, even though it was a a more sort of a fun cartoony absurdist kind of take on on the universe when we got I'm just going to talk about movies for a second and we'll go back and talk about comics when we got. Tim Burton's uh, 1989 Batman, that was that was a glorious film. It really is. And I truly, absolutely love that film. It's the closest we've come to Batman live action as the iconic Batman, the real deal. But it did drop the ball in some very key places that it shouldn't have in terms of a Batman incarnation. It was a great movie, but uh, but but in terms of a Batman incarnation, so that, uh, you can't really call that the iconic Batman across the board. Batman Returns, the second one, was also a great film. I also love that film quite a bit, uh, but it was a little darker, and it and it still had that same ball drop moments. You know, uh, you know, you got Batman. In hindsight, you look at it, and oh yeah, he actually did kill those people when he shouldn't have, and stuff like that. Batman Forever, when Joel Schumacher took the reins, isn't a horrible film. It's a fun movie. Certainly, is fun to see see that take on Robin and whatnot. But it became too a little too cartoony, you know, with the with the Two Face and Riddler and whatnot. Went a little too far in that direction, and then we shan't even speak of Batman and Robin, the fourth movie. You know, so that's uh, there's a problem there. Then, of course, that killed the character for a while. And if you look at that pattern just right there, just under those original four movies, you you see the pattern right there that people either go too dark with the character or too far too light with the character, and either one of those is bad. Either one of those misses the mark. And of course, it was a long, long time before we would see Batman on the big screen again in live action. Certainly. And then came Chris Nolan's films. And Chris Nolan, he knew that. He knew he was very careful with Batman Begins. Batman Begins, I remember seeing it and liking it quite a bit. It had a couple issues with it that I didn't like. I, I really hated that stupid ending. I don't have to kill you, but I don't have to save you. No, you're a hero. Newsflash, you do have to save him. If you want to be a hero, you've got to save people in peril, even the bad guys. Get over it. That's what heroes do. That was a really stupid ending, and that was, but it was a very Nolan esque ending. It had Nolan's fingerprints all over it, and he would take that kind of treatment of the character and just really enhance that treatment with Dark Knight and Dark Knight Rises, because he was more interested in making his Batman, and he was honest about that. Eventually, you know, he came out and said, "My Batman exists in a universe where no other superheroes exist," and and I'm, you know, and, and his Batman is riddled with identity issues and and all the things that are characteristic of a Nolan film. That's fine, but that's not the proper treatment of Batman on screen. So you come away with some some decent films. I think Dark Knight Rises is a pretty awful movie, honestly, just objectively speaking, plot hole wise and whatnot. But uh, but he he was kind of done at that point anyway. He didn't care anymore. He was trying to get out of his contract with Warner Brothers and step behind, step beyond them because of political reasons. But uh, but even though you might have had a good movie or two, still not the iconic Batman. Well, then of course we know it didn't take long at all for the Batfleck. The Batfleck. And so that brought us to the Batfleck, Zack Snyder, which was still Chris Nolan, you know, uh, executive producing. I don't know who, who in the world made this decision at Warner Brothers. But as we said many times, they, they just don't have any kind of uh, – they, they make all of their decisions from a corporate standpoint, and they don't – operate from from storytelling they don't operate from any kind of logical what would make a good film or even quite honestly what would make a successful film they just have these very uh like removed by 10 degrees decision makers about this and it's hey so and so made a good you know uh brian singer made a great x-men movie he'll do a great superman movie the two are not the same Tim Burton did a great Batman movie. He'll do a great Superman movie because they put him on that for a while with uh, Superman uh, Lives. And that's how does that logic follow? Chris Nolan did those great Batman movies. He'll do a great Superman movie. No, he won't. So they tried and tried to get him, but he didn't want to do it. Eventually, uh, 
acquiesce to executive producing. Zack Snyder did a great did a great Watchmen movie. You know, people seem to like that. Let's get him to do Superman. Where is your train of thought here? That, that is the most. I can't even. I can't even begin to defend that line of thinking. That is just so. And and we got we got exactly the kind of movie that a Watchmen director would would make for Superman. It was utterly absurd. The absolute wrong take on Superman whatsoever. There's no defending it. There is no defending it. But people still try. The Snyder Bros still try desperately. And they'll say, and this is what they say about Batman v Superman when it comes to Batman. How can you say that's not the character from the comics? You know, you look at that scene right there, or that pose right there, that that's straight out of the comics. Well, first of all, just getting a pose or or one concept or one strain of a story out of context. That's not taking it out of the comics. That's not taking it out of the comics at all. That's just take Snyder is a visual artist. He is an awful storyteller. He's a horrible storyteller. He doesn't know how to do it. He's a visual artist, and you have to really kind of appreciate his aesthetic to even appreciate his visual art. The only movies that he's done that have worked are ones that already had a very strong script or strong established story. So even though I'm not really a big fan of the Watchmen story, or even the Watchmen comic. I mean, I'm read it. I'm glad I read it, but uh, it's nothing I'll go back and read again. Um, he w- he did a very good adaptation of that material because the story was already so firmly written there. He did a horrible, horrible. Every other film that you look at where there there wasn't a story there, he just doesn't know how to tell a story. So he does what he did with Batman v Superman. He went to the comics and cherry picked all of these different looks or poses or or. Uh, Perhaps themes at times pulled them out, and and uh, and Chris Terrio was a part of this, and made them completely out of context, and uh, and it just didn't work. That's not the character. That's not even the character from those comics. Now, on the second level, he picked the worst comics, the most horrible comics to choose from. Just because something's in the comics does not mean that that's the iconic Batman or the iconic Superman. Some incredibly boneheaded ideas have been tried, you know, have tried to be pulled off in the comics, and they're horrible. They're bad ideas. Uh, that just pointing that something happened in the comic doesn't mean, oh, that that's it's 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 the iconic character. No, uh, d- did that did that choice meet with a resounding applause of their readers? Did fans everywhere incorporate that that occurrence or that look or whatever into their understanding of Batman? And uh, I've had people talk and try to defend the Batman or Ben Affleck's Batman and say, oh, you just don't. That is straight out of the comics. It's straight out of Frank Miller's Batman comics. You're right. Here's a newsflash. Frank Miller's Batman comics are awful. That is not in any way, shape or form the iconic Batman. I'm talking about Dark Knight Returns here specifically. First uh, year one was actually quite good, but that's because he was playing by the rules at that point, still coloring within the line, so to speak. The Dark Knight Returns is awful as a Batman story. It only exists and has merit as an Elseworlds, and that's always what it was. Even though the Elseworlds title didn't quite come about until after it, it was never intended to be continuity, and they applied the Elseworlds title to it as soon as they created that. That's not continuity. And it was really, and you to hear Frank Miller talk, Frank Miller is, is just, he's no one that needs to be an authority on Batman. He does not understand the character. In his typical crass way, he said, "Well, it took my it took my Batman to to give uh, give Batman his balls back," as he says. What an incredible spit in the face to to Denny O'Neill, to Neil Adams, <clears throat> to Len Wein, to all of the amazing comic book writers and artists, <clears throat> excuse me, who worked on the character through the the, the like seventies way before Dark Knight Returns ever came out. That's a ridiculous statement. And people who try to pretend that, oh, he saved Batman from the cheesiness. No, that's ridiculous. You don't know your history or your comics very well. Batman was amazing in the comics long before Miller ever came about and made him this dark, vengeful, uh, murderous, vigilante, whatever. But people will say, you know, yeah, you're right. Ben Affleck does. He looks just like the bat. The suit looks just like the suit from, from Dark Knight Returns. The scenes, some of the themes, straight out of that comic book. Absolutely. And that's a horrible decision. Horrible choice to make. That is not the iconic Batman. It, awful decision. Awful decision. Nobody, nobody with half a brain wanted to see Batman and Superman fight each other. 
that's just this ridiculous notion that you get uh, with these sort of nihilistic or, or, or anger ridden, you know, fanboys occasionally. Anybody who truly understands the characters knows that that's a silly notion. That's a completely silly notion. That's that shouldn't happen at all. But that came from Frank Miller too. He, he he believed that there's no way these two would be friends, and he hated the character Superman anyway. Still does, <clears throat> even though he tries to claim otherwise. But you can see it. You can see it in his treatments. You know, even his his more recent one. So so you have Batfleck there, who is the incarnation of the Frank Miller Batman. Not it. That's not the character either. So now you you look back at all of our compiled incarnations here and you've got the the spectrum the scale from incredibly cheesy uh you know absurdist kind of theater to to a, to a little bit darker but then we cross the line a little bit and you got him outright killing in an outright character that's not even the batman anymore in, in Zack snyder's movies he's the punisher he is the punisher let's just be honest he he's the punisher with a bat signal or the bat insignia on his chest that's all he is. He's nothing to do Batman whatsoever anymore. So when I saw the trailer for the Batman, I saw a Gotham City that looked like Chris Nolan's Gotham and Batman Begins. I didn't see anything really truly gothic or Gotham-like in that city. It looked very realistic. Now, maybe there's some things, you know, in, in other shots or whatever I've seen, but, uh, but that's part of it there. I saw the... Uh, you can't you can't get away from it. There's the diversity casting. You saw that, which is uh, is a wrong 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 move for that because you're 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 saying you're telling the audience no matter how amazing these characters these actors rather could perform right. No commentary on their performance whatsoever. I'm I'm sure they're wonderful actors, but for Gordon or for Catwoman or anything like that, you're telling the audience right there that you are not that concerned or you don't really care. You see the source material. Is something that you're you're able that you should be able to completely alter to your whim and to your artistic vision. That's what the director. That's that's his notion. That's his message to the audience right out of the gate with that kind of diversity casting. The bat suit. <laughs> this is what everybody tends to kind of start with and harp on. But the bat suit is is absurd. What is that awful bat suit? It does not even remotely take a billionaire to make that suit or that car. For any reason, uh, for that matter, as as people have so well said, any cosplayer who has ten minutes in an army surplus store can come out with a black can of spray paint and have that bat suit. It's ridiculous. It's utter. It's it's that he looks silly. There was a scene in the trailer where he's kind of walking around a crime scene or something like that, and he looks like such a joke. It does give him a proper superhero suit. Give him a bat suit. You know, make it. As the iconic bat suit should be, there was there was a, at the time rumors that maybe we'd actually get the blue, you know, the blue and gray, and that would be amazing. But they're so scared about it looking uh, too comic booky that they go this absurd jump cliff jump into the realism where it just looks silly. I do love the idea of him taking the gun that shot his parents and weaving that into chest armor as it was done in the comics, because that's a incredibly poetic and and, uh, and and wonderful line to say that. Here, the gun that stole my heart when it robbed me of my parents will now protect my heart. That's a great concept of, of what he's done with his positive activism and choosing to go out and fight uh, against the criminals in the underworld that took his parents from him. And we'll get to that in a second, too, because that idea of that's what he means by vengeance. We'll get to that idea in a second. So the suit is nonsense. The suit's ridiculous. It, it uh, you know, the ears are, are you know, they're, they're passable length, but with the eyes, you can't see his eyes at all. There's a, there's a one scene where he has the cowl off and you see the black makeup around his eyes, which Keaton and Nolan and, and, and all the Batman performers have had to do because you, you can't see any flesh color, you know, around the eye holes, but why does Pattinson even need to have the black uh, eyeliner or eye makeup on? You can't see his eyes through the suit that dehumanizes him. That makes him, it makes him look like more like a bug than a bat. Quite frankly, where's the man there? It's Batman. <clears throat> he shouldn't look like a monster. He should have this sort of supernatural, uh, evo you know, he should evoke the supernatural to criminals, certainly. But if you want to see how to do that, just look at that opening reveal scene in Batman 89. That was wonderful, where he came in and Tim, Bur Tim Burton really embraced the gothic and he's holding up the cape like Dracula and stuff like that. That was wonderful and, and terrifying the criminals there. But the suit's just awful. The, the bug eyes. You, no, no. 
the car is ridiculous. The car is, as many people have said, is just a souped up, you know, you could go into any trailer park in the country and, and find somebody who's poured a lot into their car and then boom, it, you know, maybe the capabilities in the movie or something. Who cares even? Who really cares? It's it's silly. That, that's nothing that a, that, a, that a billionaire who's dedicated his life since the murder of his parents to learning all he can to shaping his mind and body would come up with with his resources. That's that's nope. Nope. Completely missed the mark. Uh, the costume designer and the director, Matt Reese, should be utterly ashamed of themselves for even presenting that. That's not presentable in any way to the public. That that was that's that's uh, it's quite embarrassing is, is what that is. And then here's the real point. There's that scene. You can tell throughout the movie there are so many little things in which the director thinks that people are going to get really excited about. Like, oh, did you hear that? They said, who are you? And he said, I'm vengeance. Okay, well, that line, of course, is referencing the great Batman animated series. There's that episode. I think it's the, uh, yeah, it's the, the first uh, Scarecrow episode of the first season where he says that wonderfully iconic line that only Kevin Conroy can utter, you know, so perfectly. He says, I am vengeance. I am the knight. I am Batman. That's great. But what does that mean? Well, the iconic animated verse there defines that for us in Batman Mask of the Phantasm that we're about to watch here in just a little bit together. Vengeance does not mean he's seeking revenge on the criminal underworld for what they did to him and how they killed his parents. He wants to, to you know, lash out in anger against them. No. If that's your concept of Batman, you go write another character because you have no clue who you're supposed to be writing. That is not in any way what batman means by vengeance he's not meaning the literal meaning of the word he's meaning this this kind of uh metaphorical idea of they took B batman says they, they took my life from me they took my parents i'll never have that life growing up with my parents and that, that happiness that i could have had with my parents and this is also explored in batman as the phantasm we'll talk about as it goes through they took that life from me so i'm going to take their life from them not literally not killing them, but their life of crime, their their sense of they're safe to do this kind of behavior in Gotham City. I'm going to steal that from them. So they they felt so completely at home waltzing up to my parents in an alley and killing them. They're not going to get that life anymore. They don't get to feel at home in Gotham City. Every time a criminal goes out, they've got to shudder and they've got to think, is the Batman watching me? That is what Batman means by vengeance. It truly means justice. But in the context of Gotham City, it's called vengeance, right? Because Gotham City's not Metropolis. Again, we'll talk about this in the movie, too. That's a glorious, glorious meaning of the word. And that's what Batman means. And it's not any reading into it at all. If you if you watch the Batman, the animated series, if you know anything about the character, how he's been consistently loved and shown through the uh, through the comics, that's simply what it means. Batman does not kill that would be true vengeance, right? To go out and just hurt as many people as much as he can. Now, we don't know if he's going to kill in the Batman movie or not. I, I, My guess is they'll probably go ahead and make him kill, but it will kind of be sort of the thing as Zack Snyder made him kill. That's my guess anyway. It's just a guess. But Matt Reeves and maybe even Warner Brothers above him seem so desperate to try to please everybody. And as a result, they're not really pleasing anybody. You're always going to have those zombies who are just so desperate to think anything's going to be good that they'll just, they'll, they've already decided to love it and they'll, they'll defend anything, you know, uh, you haven't seen it yet. You know, that kind of idea. But we we don't see him kill in the trailers. We don't know if that's you know, truly going to happen. But what do we do see? We see him show up to a ring of thugs there, and one of them comes up to him, and he does this amazing sort of, you know, takes him down. That's great. That's great. Hey, Batman would do that. Incapacitate them. But once he's incapacitated, Batman sits there, and, and or the, you know, quote-unquote Batman, Pattinson's Batman sits there and just proceeds to beat him ruthlessly. Just beat him there for a few minutes. Nope. Not the character of Batman. Completely missed the mark there. Utterly missed the mark. At no stage of Batman's life is that anything that he should ever do. Nope. Nope. I don't care. I don't care if that's what just, it's just when he's starting out and he's just trying to learn. Nope. I don't care if you want to say, well, it's just when he was scared because he saw Superman into the world and, and he just got scared there for a little bit and decided to kill. But it's just for a little bit. Then he stopped. No. You completely railroaded the archetype. That's does That can't happen. That can't work. He's no longer a hero. You can't come back from that. And that's what Batman knows. 
It doesn't work. That's not the character. It, we've already seen absolute deal breakers in the Batman trailer. This is not going to be a movie about Batman at all. Some people people are going to go see it. They're going to go throw the money at it because the name Batman is still still does the name Batman still has enough power to to gain an audience. But it's not going to be anything like the the uh, the numbers that the name Batman has garnered in the past. Warner Brothers got that wake up call when Batman v Superman woefully underperformed, and the Snyder Brats they'll they'll try to they'll try to pull some sort of like you know. Uh, uh, g- mental gymnastics with the numbers say actually no blah blah no it, it woefully underperformed just go look up the numbers yourself a movie with Batman and Superman together at the same time should have been amazing should have been the, the record breaking of all time no that failed big time so Warner Brothers is trying to think well that's just because people didn't like the Snyder vision but uh, you know they don't get it that yeah don't do the Snyder treatment then they think well we just get a different name on there then it's it's not the Snyder vision. It's the Reeves vision. The vision is the same, you know? So you still got this, uh, this, this jump off the cliff of darkness. The Batman's not going to, uh, to perform. It's going to woefully underperform as well, I think. And, uh, that's just going to be the last, the last shred. People are eventually going to stop wanting Batman movies and making Batman movies. Um, I know that seems like unfathomable to people who don't remember the long drought we had between Clooney and Nolan. But that drought was there for a reason. We do live in a different world right now. Hollywood's a different world, but Hollywood's no longer the the superhero movie bubble or anything like that either. Um, and it didn't need to be a superhero movie bubble. Warner Brothers was a heavy contributor to making it be that. Paladin Demo pointing out, no, the Frank Miller Batman, from what I understand, or from what I remember, didn't literally kill himself, but right up to the line, right up to the line, far, far too brutal. And it wasn't a very big leap at all for Snyder just to take that Batman and go ahead and make him kill uh, because the Frank Miller Batman was torturing already. You know, it was just sadistic. It was an awful, awful character. Here, Sound Engraver says, I wonder if the writers are ashamed of Batman being wealthy since they are designing his costume and car that way. I didn't think about that. But you know what? In this sort of, um, you know, we still have that idea of, well, the 1%, you know, that kind of idea, uh, you know, they're the bad guys. And we live in a world that's that's so, so ill, like chronically ill with Trump derangement syndrome. And that's not a political statement at all. You can like or hate Trump. That's just a fact. The, 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 the entertainment industry has Trump derangement syndrome. I mean, he's responsible for every cold sore they get. It's just insane. And, uh, and maybe that he didn't want him to didn't want to, uh, you know, associate Bruce Wayne as another just rich man, rich white man or something like that. Maybe I didn't think about that, but that's actually... Uh, depending on how the film plays out, that's actually could be very well in there. Um, making it, you know, I could see him being like, well, this is a time when he starts out where he he's uh, he rejects his money or whatever because he wants to live on the street as the pe- one of the people or something like that. That's absurd. That's a horrible take on the character. Don't that's that's dumb. That would be just putting these uh, kind of vir- you know modern day virtue signaling into that. Absolutely. Uh, Alec Purdue, thank you very much for the five dollars. Since this Warner Brothers isn't handling DC well at all. Which company would you give DC to for better treatment? Honestly, um, none, none. I, I'm not trying to be fatalistic. If you've listened to my channel for a while, you know my my thoughts on the nature of Hollywood and the nature of the comic industry. The sickness is too deep, and it can't be fixed right now. DC just has to die, and it's on its way to dying. And, uh, and and Hollywood just needs to 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 hit rock bottom and continue to die. We'll see. Will it or won't it? I don't know. There's plenty of people willing to just shell out their money for it, no matter what. You know, gimme, gimme, gimme. I'll look for a for a little spot of glitter on the brown pile on the sidewalk. You know, there are plenty of people willing to do that, and it's sad. But uh, but it, it, I don't. Th- I can't imagine anybody running the company in in the current climate of of Hollywood or the publishing industry or whatnot that wouldn't just eventually succumb to it. I mean, there are individuals that I'd love to see run, uh, you know, in powers of, 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 uh, you know, authority there and whatnot, but I just don't think, I don't think it's, it's, it's capable of being saved. I think that with, uh, you know, with, with, with everything right now, star Wars, with all of our beloved franchises, I think, uh, Hollywood and, 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 uh, all these industries would be far better served just to go start creating their own uh, original material. 
They won't because they're cowards. And, uh, and, and I mean that really quite literally, they, uh, you know, the, um, the, the reason why we get so many remakes of, of uh, franchises or adaptations of franchises that are already popular is because Hollywood still got this mindset. It's this corporate mindset that, well, that's already got a proven success record. That's already has an audience. That audience will automatically come over to our new side with it. So that's a safe bet. Well, as we're seeing, that's not a safe bet because those audiences are getting a little sick of, of people just, you know, uh, just throwing the label of what they love in their franchise on something that's completely different that has no resemblance to it whatsoever. So they're not crossing over and they're not coming over. So that's a, that's um, it's not working, but, but Hollywood hasn't gotten that message yet. They're still just, you know, it takes them like 10 years to learn a lesson. So, um, you know, so, I mean, you got, you got good news coming out of Hollywood, certainly. And you got good news coming from even the publishing industry, but it's not, it's nothing there. There we're seeing some treatments. We're not seeing cures. That's the best way of putting it. We're seeing some really cool treatments happening, but it's not the cure yet. And as you know, if you have a sickness and you've got, uh, you know, a, a, an illness and you're just going to sort of treat the symptoms, but not cure it, then you're not, you're not going anywhere. You, you made it a little more bearable on the, on the surface for a bit, maybe, but, but you haven't done anything to the root cause and it's only going to rear up perhaps even stronger uh, once you, when, you know, after you fended it off for a bit. That's the problem that I, that I see right now. So I just I, I don't think anybody can run it properly.